Oh, I mean, there's, you know, there's so many, there's a huge number of articles and commentaries out there by, you know, like the biggest banks, institutions, analysts, think tanks on this exact theme, the copper demand is going to increase substantially over the next decade and more. I mean, right now, I think you've got global stockpiles. They're currently at dangerously low levels. And, uh, you know, a lot of this is, you know, obviously being driven. There's a number of countries right now that are starting to move away, as you just said, from fossil fuels into clean energy. You know, so when you're starting to go into clean energy, solar panels, wind turbines, batteries, then, you know, not just that, but take massive amounts of copper. And that's not to mention all the electrical grids that need to be either put in or updated from the old infrastructure that's been in place because there's it's going to be a huge demand. I mean, you just look at, uh, you know, if you look at every house in every neighborhood, they all have electric car. You're going to need a lot more support with the with the existing grids and that. And it's all copper, right? There's such an, a massive amount of copper that goes into these. So just the infrastructure build out alone, um, I think going green is, I don't think you can keep up. The, the, the demand for copper is going to far outstrip what the supply is right now. You know, and that's, and if we talk about, you know, this evolution into electric vehicles from combustion engines, I mean, that's another huge, massive part, like like as big as any of it right now. I mean, you look, say an electric vehicle, I think it takes about three to four times the amount of copper that a combustion engine vehicle has. Okay, then you look at a bus there, I think it's like 10 to 15 times the amount of copper. New exploration, you know, we must start looking because a lot of the existing copper mines and stuff have been you know, big open pit, easy to find, low hanging fruit. And that's what we've kind of gone after over, you know, and that's just the natural evolution into mining, right? You're going to pick the lowest hanging fruit to go after first, and you're going to high grade that stuff first. And that's just how mining works. I mean, it's just, it, it, it makes sense. So now that we've done a lot of that sort of low hanging fruit, we picked it and we're mining it, the new exploration, we have to start looking deeper uh, below the earth's surface. And this requires significant amounts of deeper drilling and much larger exploration budgets. I don't have the statistics on my fingertips, but I, the, new, the number of new copper mines or deposits that must be discovered and brought to production to meet the world's demand, it's mind boggling. And, and the exploration needs to shift into high gear and right now, not tomorrow, right now. So the lag time though we have between a discovery and the production of a mine, that can take up to decades, you know, 15, 20 plus years sometimes. So especially when you're considering the difficulty discovering deeper and deeper deposits, understanding complex, say mining scenarios, overcoming metallurgical recovery challenges, and while having the pressure on a growing cost of exploration and, and also the project development, because all the costs are, are rising from labor costs, um, infrastructure costs, equipment costs, um, fuel, like just everything. Everything is, is, is going up. So, I mean, it's becoming more and more capital intensive to find these.